Hi everyone, welcome to this video entitled System Discretization Part 2. This is the second part of this video, Power Electronics number 67, System Discretization. In this first video, we saw an introduction and we explained how to discretize a low-pass filter. Today, we will see how to do the same process to discretize the small signal model of the current mode back DC-DC converter and we will show several QSPICE simulations to illustrate this process. Here we have other relevant videos related to this video today, so if you want to have more information about these topics, please take a look at these videos. So today we are going to focus on the current mode back DC-DC converter as shown here. We have studied this converter in these previous videos, Power Electronics number 37 and Power Electronics number 66. So here we have the control circuit. We measure the current through the inductor with this sensor, which has a gain RS. We compare with a peak reference and then we act on the RS flip-flop to generate the gate signal for the switch. We know all this very well. And this is the transfer function that we have for this converter. This is the control transfer function, the output voltage perturbation over the current peak perturbation. So we have this expression here. We have the different values of the converter here in blue, and this is the representation of this transfer function. In this transfer function, we have the frequency of the pole, which is given by this expression, and in this case is something like 3 kHz, and the frequency of the zero is this one here, and in this case is something like 80 kHz. So today we are going to see how to discretize this transfer function. So we can use this discretized transfer function in the implementation of the digitally controlled DC-DC converter. So here we have the process of discretizing this transfer function. It is the same as we saw for the low-pass filter. So here we start with the discrete signal generated by the digital compensator in the microprocessor. So we have the zero order hole block here with a gain B. The output of this block goes into our plant, which in this case is the current mode back converter, and then we have the output voltage. So if we consider the discrete version of the output voltage, what we have to obtain is the transfer function equivalent to all this. If we work in the Z domain, then we have the Z transform of the output of the compensator. This is the gain BGC of Z, and then we have the Z transform of the output voltage. So as we have seen in previous video, BGC of Z is given by the Z transfer function of BS times GC of S. So we applied the equation that we have seen before and we substitute here the equation corresponding to the transfer function of the plant. So we get this expression here and we can split this in this Z transfer function and this other transfer function here. So we can continue here. This is what we get in the previous slide. Now using a um, table of the Z transforms from the Laplace transform. Then we have this transfer function in the Laplace domain and here is the equivalent in the Z domain and the same for this other one. So we have directly the Z transfer function of this expression and this other expression here as shown in this equation. So then now we can operate a little bit as shown in this line and finally we can get the discrete difference equation as shown here. So we have the output voltage, the current 
sample of the output voltage. This is a factor times the previous sample of the output voltage, another factor times the current value of the output of the digital compensator and another factor times the previous sample of the output of the digital compensator. So this is the discretized operation of our back converter in current mode. And now we are going to do a QSPICE simulation to verify that this discretization is correct. So here we have the implementation in QSPICE. The discretized system is implemented with this module here, C++ module in QSPICE. So if we go to the C++ source. Here we have the different variables and parameters. And below, as we have seen in other videos, we do as usual. Here we save the previous samples of the output voltage and of the input voltage. And here we are measuring the current sample of the input voltage. And then with this equation, which is exactly the same equation as we have seen in previous slide, we implemented the behavior of the discretized system. Finally, here we are sending to the outputs the current sample of the output voltage and the current sample of the input voltage. So this is the implementation of the C++ source. And then in the schematic, we have other two circuits for comparison. This is the equivalent analog small signal model of the current mode back converter. We can model this converter as a current source here applied to the output capacitor in parallel with the load resistor with this current source which is dependent on the input voltage and divided by the sensing resistor. So here we will have the response of the control transfer function in the analog version. And also for comparison, what we are doing here is sending also to the analog circuit the current that depends now on the sampled input voltage, also for comparison with the discrete output signal, the discrete signal of the discretized system. This signal, the discrete output of our system is at this point here. Now we are injecting a sinusoidal waveform at the input of 10 kHz and the sampling period is 10 microseconds. So let's run the simulation and see the results. And here we have the waveforms at the top. We have in green the input voltage. In red we have the sampled input voltage. And in blue we have the output corresponding to the analog transfer function. And at the bottom, we have again the input voltage. In blue, we have the output corresponding to the analog transfer function. But when we are injecting the sampled input voltage to the circuit instead of the analog input voltage, and in red, we have the output of the digital system, the discrete output signal. So we are adding the blue one to see that at the sampling instance, we have the same value of the discrete signal and the output of the analog system in which we are injecting the discrete input voltage. So with this, we verify that our discretization is correct because we have the same value at this point at the sampling instance for both waveforms. So now we can maybe take the analog output to the bottom for comparison. So we can see that we have some delay from the output of our discrete system and also from the output of the analog system with the sampled input. And this is due to the effect of the discretization. We have done an analysis here of the gain and the phase at the three outputs, as we have seen also in previous video for the low pass filter. 
and here in this window we can see the game the game is very similar in the three cases and we have some face lag when we are doing the discretization we can try maybe other sampling times for example here if of course if we decrease the sampling period and run again then we are going to have a much better accuracy in the generation of the outputs so we can see that they are very very similar we can decrease the frequency one kilohertz so the situation is going to be pretty much the same we have a very good accuracy and maybe at this frequency we select 10 microseconds for the sampling period and run again we can see that still we have a very good accuracy and finally here in this simulation we are doing a frequency response analysis to obtain the frequency response in the three cases the frequency response of the analog system the frequency response of the analog system with the discrete input voltage at the input and the frequency response of the discretized system so this is the same as we have seen in the case of the low pass filter with all these statements we can do the frequency response analysis and the plotting of the body diagrams so we can run now so here is running now we are going from 100 hertz up to 100 kilohertz 10 points per decade as shown here so here we are having the different frequencies at which the analysis is performed and this is going to take some time because we have a total of 31 simulations so now we have all the results here in this window we have all the data corresponding to the frequency responses and here in this graphic we have the plotting this is the magnitude of the gain and below we have the phase of the gain so we can see that the magnitudes are very similar up to high frequency but in the case of the phases we have here in green the phase of the analog system and the other phases of the analog system with the discrete signal at the input and of the discrete system we can see that the phase is increasing in absolute value as we have seen previously and finally here we have a comparison of the frequency responses for two different sampling periods this is the case of a sampling period equal to one microsecond this is the one that we have just seen so this is the response this is the magnitude and here we have the phase and if we increase the sampling period up to 10 microseconds then we have these responses here so again we have some phase increase as we do the discretization and of course because the sampling period now is 10 microseconds the sampling frequency is 100 kilohertz so we can see that when we get close to 50 kilohertz then we start having this strange behavior because the sampling period is too high to operate at these high frequencies well this is all today in this presentation i hope that this information is useful for you please let me know if you have any comment or question thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video goodbye now